Shalom WJC family. It is time for our weekly Torah talk. And this week, as we read Parsha Vayishlach in synagogue, I want to talk about the idea of reward. Right? A lot of us function in this, this mindset that if we live right, if we do what God says, we should get a reward. And what is that reward? Everything should go right for us. We should never suffer. We should never feel pain. We should live in a paradise kind of world. Now, I think rationally, somewhere we know that that's not how life works. And yet, our religious sensibilities seem to stay in this place. Vayishlach gives us a great example of, of, of how that's not the kind of reward God, God um, gives to those who serve God. Because life happens, and life is always going to include some pain. Um, that is the price of having beautiful, deep, loving relationships, if nothing else. Um, because being human means relationships end, right? Because we're mortal. So so what is the reward, though, that we're looking for? And, and a great example of this seemingly unjust reward um, is is our, our matriarch, Rebecca. In Parsha Vayishlach, it's reported in chapter 35 of Genesis, verse 8, that Rebecca's nursemaid, Devorah, dies. This is uh, someone who's been with them all along since Rebecca left Laban's household, you know, decades earlier, but long before Jacob went back there and now has come back. Rebecca seems to have become part of Jacob's entourage. Maybe the Midrash tells us Rebecca sent her to Laban's household to say, it's all clear. You can come back now. I don't think Esau will kill you. He's, he's calmed down. But she's coming back with them, and she dies. And Jacob is bereft. And she gets a, a, a hero's funeral, and she's buried under an oak that later becomes called the, the tree of, of weeping. So deep is the depth of their depression for her. And the Midrash asks, you know, that's great that they're so upset over, over Devorah, but it seems amazing that the Torah reports Devorah's death and this tree of weeping, this, you know, this dramatic verse about her death. And we don't even hear about Rebecca's death. Rebecca, the matriarch who, who pointed the Jewish people in the right direction, right? The one who God told, I have a, uh, there, in your stomach, there is a, a younger and an older, and the, and the older will serve the younger. The one who knew that the destiny was for Jacob to be the father, the patriarch of the Jewish people. And Isaac, right, worked against that. Isaac favored Esau. We don't know why exactly. It's hard to imagine that Rebecca didn't tell him about the prophecy that Jacob was to be higher. Maybe, maybe Isaac's bitter. Right? He hasn't had much of a relationship with God, as far as we can tell, since the Akedah, since the binding of Isaac, when his father, at God's command, held a knife over his head. Isaac seemed to be working counter to the purpose. Rebecca saves the day, creates the whole deception that we read about in last week's Parsha. And we don't even hear about her death. And the Midrash tells us in Tanhuma, yeah, she had a terrible death. Right? Jacob was away. She died while Jacob, her beloved son, was away. Her husband was blind, couldn't really give her, uh, Isaac was blind, it's reported on in last week's Parsha, so couldn't really give her the, the honor, honorable funeral she wanted. And Esau hated her. Right? Esau hated his mother for manipulating him out of his birthright and his blessing, his blessing anyway. Not only that, the Midrash goes so far as to say that Esau has grown into to be such a scoundrel that the neighbors even hated her. And they came by at her funeral to spit to, to someone who gave nurse and raised such a scoundrel. She died in ignominy. That's a terrible story. Where's her reward? This is her, her destiny to be the one who puts the Jewish people on the right path, and this is her reward? It's very, very difficult. So what, what are we left with? What is, in fact, Rebecca's reward? Well, I, I think the answer is her reward is knowing that, that one day, thousands of years later, a rabbi, a Jewish leader, is going to be here, as many, many do, saying that Rebecca is the matriarch, maybe more than any other, who put the Jewish people on their path, 
who gave us our destiny. The reward is being part of something greater than herself. And that is enough of a reward. Right? That is, it's not that she she dies with such honors. That's nice. We want the world to work that way. It should work that way. We shouldn't have to experience pain or anguish in our lives, especially if we're doing everything we can to live on the derech, on the path that God set for us. But even Rivka, even Rebecca, the most essential matriarch in guiding the Jewish people on our path towards our destiny to be a people, even, even Rivka didn't necessarily merit that. That has as much to do with luck and good fortune as it does with how we live our lives. The reward for being on the path God set for us, the reward for doing mitzvot and following Torah, the reward for making sure we are a part of, a, of an eternal people with a shared purpose and mission, is the knowledge that we are part of something greater than ourselves, that no matter what is going on in our our small world in which we live, our small lives, our small area, things often well beyond our control, like pandemics and, 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 and huge shifts in, in, in political um, movements and the way people think about, uh, uh, about different kinds of, of things and people and all kinds of turmoil, which I think you could say we are experiencing today and are causing tremendous stress, not to mention bereavement, as people are get that we know get sick and some die. That is that is the way of the world, teaches the Torah, teaches Judaism. There's luck, there's fortune, and you know, we have to make our own destiny a lot of the time. But whatever is going on in our world, as the life of Rivka teaches us, we will always know we are part of something greater than ourselves, part of God's purpose, part of a covenant to bring God's holiness into the world and to raise the, the, the spirituality of the world for everyone, ourselves included. That is, in and of itself, a powerful reward and one in which we can all take part, whatever is going on in our lives. May we all have that sense of satisfaction of being part of the great Jewish journey. Shabbat Shalom.